The views expressed on the Jerry Cahill CF podcast are that of Jerry Cahill and guests, and not necessarily those of the Boomer Esiason Foundation. Nothing on the Jerry Cahill CF podcast should be considered medical advice. Such advice can only be given by a physician who is experienced with cystic fibrosis. The Boomer Esiason Foundation, Jerry Cahill and guests cannot be held responsible for any damage which may result from using the information on this podcast without the permission of your medical doctor. Jerry Cahill CF podcast presented by the Boomer Esiason Foundation and jerrycahill.com. Welcome to Jerry Cahill's Living, Breathe, and Succeeding podcast series. This episode, Becoming a Parent and Overcoming Infertility with CF, was made possible through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech to the Boomer Esiason Foundation. I'm in the wrong spot. <laughs> Today we'll meet Chris Quam, 36 years old and diagnosed with CF at age 4. Chris is happily married, the proud father of his son, Ben, an assistant district attorney, and an athlete. Chris is a runner, triathlete, and avid cyclist. My name is Chris Quam. I'm 36 years old and have cystic fibrosis. After I was diagnosed, my parents were told to treat Chris like a normal child, and when he gets sick, we'll deal with it. Uh, for them, that meant enrolling me in a lot of activities. I learned how to swim, I played soccer, I played basketball, baseball, ice skating, family ski trips were normal. Um, none, none of that was uh, withheld from me because of a diagnosis. I met my wife in 2003. We had a long distance relationship for a time. We decided to move to Boston where she did a master's degree and I got a job. And uh, 14 years later, here we are. CF has definitely had an impact on um, my relationship with my wife. Uh, we did a lot of premarital counseling between the time where we got engaged to when we got married. And uh, it's definitely been a present uh, factor, both one that makes our relationship stronger and more intentional, uh, but also obviously some amount of fear and anxiety that accompanies life with CF. Uh, it definitely affected our uh, relationship and our effort to become parents. I learned that I was infertile when I was 17 or 18 when I transferred into an adult clinic. Um, on the first day of my time in adult clinic, I was told uh, during an intake interview, uh, which looking back was pretty rough. Uh, it was not addressed in my pediatric clinic because at the time, um, and this was the 80s and 90s, uh, these were pediatric teams who thought infertility was an adult issue and so they didn't really have to deal with it. And uh, in hindsight, I think there's room for it to be dealt with better. Addressing male infertility should absolutely be a standard clinical procedure for CF clinics. Young boys in the age of 12 to 14 deal best with that piece of news rather than waiting until 17 or 18. When I learned about it as a young adult, uh, you know, it bothered me a lot. It was something that kind of came out of the blue. I was told it as a matter of fact, you know you're infertile, right? Uh, I said, yeah, because I was an awkward 18-year-old and didn't know how to respond. And really, it was not addressed clinically after that until I was engaged to be married. So it was something I kind of carried with me that bothered me a lot, that um, I knew I wanted to be a parent one day. I didn't know if that was going to be possible. And um, you know that was for me to deal with, but emotionally and uh, Intellectually, it was the hardest part of growing up with CF for me to deal with. In terms of starting a family, I certainly have uh, a few recommendations. You know, if you feel that your health status uh, makes having a family a responsible decision for you, I cannot think of anything more important in my life that represents everything I've worked for than becoming a parent. Our first step was to learn more about what our choices were in terms of overcoming infertility through IVF and uh, all of the wide array of fertility treatments available today uh, and adoption. And it took us about between six months and a year to kind of hash all that out. We, we did see a urologist. We further confirmed my uh, infertility. We learned about what that meant clinically in terms of how to become pregnant with a biological child. We learned about what our options were uh, to have a not biological child with Christine's genetic material, 
Uh, we tested my wife for uh, the CF genes. Um, so we took a lot of those basic first steps to determine is IVF on the table or not. We also did a lot of work about what would adoption look like. We made cost comparisons and ultimately we landed on adoption as, as our route towards parenthood. Um, it wasn't because my wife's a CF carrier, she isn't. It had a lot to do with um, the odds of successful IVF for a couple in their 30s. It had a lot to do with cost. Uh, it had a lot to do with our comfort in having a child who was not ours biologically. The hardest part in our journey to parenthood was once we had chosen adoption, it was not an easy nor quick process. Uh, it took us about a year to do the initial uh, interviewing and social work visits and all of the uh, stuff we had to do just to be eligible for a match. And then we waited for a match for nearly three years. And that was hard. That was by far the hardest. Ultimately, it was absolutely worth it. So after college ended, I lost my coaches and my teammates and the structure of collegiate running. I moved to a big city. I was doing a master's degree. I stopped running in large part and I ultimately got quite sick. Uh, my lung function was quite low and I realized I had to rededicate myself to exercise. I started signing up for events. I joined a cycling club. Um, I found some mentors in that club who taught me a lot about riding and uh, that's how I got into it. I'm incredibly disciplined uh, and some of that is driven by the responsibility I feel not only towards myself but towards my wife and child. Um, I do not miss treatments. Uh, I kind of get all anxious and out of control if I do. So <laughs> sort of in a way of managing uh, you know, that medium to low, moderate, you know, whatever level of anxieties, you know, I, I deal with that personally by adhering to care. It helps me know that I'm doing everything I can do, which makes me feel better. I have never adhered to care because a doctor told me to. I've always adhered to care because of what I want to do with my life, be it maintain a full-time job, be it earn a law degree, be it run a marathon. Those are the things that have always driven my adherence to care and being a meaningful, present parent and partner as a spouse, those are the things that ultimately drive everything I do. And the people with CF who've paved the way, knowing that I'm not the first one to do these things, I'm not the only person with CF trying to run marathons or have kids or be professionals, um, knowing that they are out there too, trying to do the same things, makes it easier for me to say, this is possible, you know, it is not unreasonable to want these things and to make them happen. And that's what I am most thankful for. When it comes to exercise, I definitely have a few recommendations for people with CF. First, find activity that you love to do. Uh, there are a lot of options out there. I don't think it matters if you're running or weightlifting or biking or swimming, as long as you're doing something. For me, exercise is an emotional break from treatment. It's what shows me that all the other not enjoyable parts of my CF routine are working and what make me want to do them. I think it's pretty clear uh, clinically that it's hugely important to maintaining health with CF. Um, it's not another 30 minutes tethered to a couch. Um, it's me being outside doing what I love. When I look at my life with CF, um, I do not see sickness or limitation. Having CF has crystallized my deepest desires and has helped me live a more meaningful and full life. Um, and that doesn't mean it's always easy and that doesn't mean I'm always going to be healthy and that doesn't mean it's necessarily fun all the time. But I would encourage everyone who's been diagnosed with CF to look for that meaning and to find within the diagnosis the motivation to do what it takes to live the life you dream of.